addiction into life. But I wanted to talk about this. A lot of times I'm seeing people, and I'm not really abreast to the vegan movement or the vegan hoopla, or basically, I guess what I'm trying to say is the vegan drama. You know, I just don't watch it. It does not make me feel happy at all. But um, I do see some people sometimes that have been raw vegan quite a while, um, maybe, maybe even three or four years, not long enough to develop like these deficiencies and things that they think, oh, I'm craving meat or I'm craving, um, I don't know, have some butternut squash soup with seaweed on there. I, <laughs> like nothing is going to, at this point in time, nothing I can see would make me come off my raw vegan zing. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. No, and I don't mind if other people do that, and I don't mind hearing them. What is great is when you can be in a mind state where you can listen to other people's opinions and appreciate them for where they are, what they're saying, and look for the factual evidence that's good and, and whatever in that, and not just try to critique and bring them down. You know, I, I think it's a great place. I, it doesn't affect me, you know, it, it really doesn't. I don't mind them doing it. Um, but I was just over on Facebook loading up my fabulous um, daikon radish wraps, right? And I saw somebody that's on my feed was saying, um, and it was like a real sullen look of somebody, like like their face really sunk in. It was a terror. It looked like a heroin addict, okay? And it said, why raw vegans eventually become deficient or something like that. <clears throat> and, okay, that can happen, but you can also become deficient on a standard American diet or a vegan diet or whatever. It's just a matter of what you're eating. Are you living off cupcakes? Are you like trying to live off just mineral deficient fruit? You know, we've got to realize the society we're in. And another thing this friend was talking about is if you are mineral deficient, are you trying to look away and have a good day and not supplement? Are you, are you not trying to do something about that because you just think, oh, well, I'm fine. I'm on this raw vegan diet or or I'm fruitarian or whatever. I think we need to get over that. I think we need to look at the reality of the situation, right? Like, um, I was looking for my notes because I had some notes on that. Um, but anyway, I, I don't want to call anybody out on that. And this person had some good points because they were saying people trying to live on a fruitarian diet, okay, meaning all fruit, okay, most of my calories come from fruit. However, I always always across the board for the last 10 years, have balanced that with greens, overt or outside plant raw fats, okay? And I get a lot of veggies. I get natural sodium from tomatoes, veggies, celery. I get iodine from seaweed and kelp and different things. I'm very mindful of what's going in my body because I'll tell you what would suck. Are you ready for this? You be on a raw vegan diet for let's say 15 or 20 years, and I have seen this happen, and you, you have a heart attack. Why is that? Because your raw vegan diet was high in fat, and it was high on omega-6 and 9 fatty acids, mainly 6, and you weren't getting enough omega-3 to balance it out. If you want to do this, really do it. If you want to do it, really look into it, really learn, and really don't just take, okay, fill up on... I don't know, rice cakes and bananas are not going to be enough in this day and age to sustain you, right? <clears throat> so, like he was saying, people are not eating their greens, they're not living in a tropical environment, and even if they are, maybe their fruit isn't pristine, but around here in South Carolina, I can hardly find any ripe fruit. Um, I, I do, of course, most of my calories come from fruit, but I always balance those, like I said, with greens, veggies. I always get plenty of hydration. I get minerals. I get sodium. I get iodine. I get all these things. I get magnesium. Plenty of, of all that, okay? So the thing is, not just looking away. And, but what bothers me about that is you've got a lot of people in the raw vegan movement and they're looking at this or maybe they didn't have substantial results or whatever on a raw vegan diet and then they're going to turn around and basically bash it. Okay, there's clearly 
a way to do it. I've been doing it all these years, right? And I will never go back. I will never trade in the high and zinginess that I get from low-fat, raw, vegan, balanced in a healthy, balanced way with anything else. I can't imagine myself ever doing that. I can't even imagine looking back at this video now and thinking, I can't believe you said that because now I'm eating basically white rice cakes, dumping crystal sugar, Dixie crystal sugar into my smoothies and living off white rice. That's not happening, okay? The day would have to come where that is all that was left on this earth for me to eat. So I feel like when people put that out there, it makes other people that are kind of new and I'll think, well, if they can't do it, how can I? There's a way to do it and I would suggest, if not me, anybody else that's been doing this long term that knows their stuff, okay, that has researched this a decade, a decade and a half, that knows what they're talking about, that has dealt with weight loss, that has dealt with disease, that has dealt with mental disorders, getting a coach and working these things through. And if you don't, getting some books and references, making yourself notes and diving deep into it, you know? And if you don't, if you do it that way, which is what I did, and you can, but it's a long road, but you can do it. And a lot of times when you research and learn things, things yourself, they stick better into your brain. So that's good too. But um, I just kind of really, it saddens me to see people saying that. Like they come off a raw vegan, low fat raw vegan diet. And okay, it's not our fault they weren't eating enough minerals. It's not our fault they weren't checking out all these different levels. It's not our fault they were eating less than they needed or not moving their body or all these things. But now all of a sudden it's raw vegan's fault. Or here's another example. Say you go vegan and, and somebody or somebody goes vegan and they have gone on a junk food vegan diet and they don't get the results they want. They're looking for healing, regeneration, weight loss, beauty, mental clarity, all these things, but they're living on Skittles and Sprite, guess what? You're not going to get those results, and then it's vegan's fault, just like it's raw vegan's fault. No, it's your fault, or it's my fault for not researching, right? For just listening to anybody we hear saying, um, eat all you want, five, six, seven thousand calories a day, binge eat, look at me, I'm doing food challenges, I'm doing, like, look at all this food I'm consuming, and this is a healing diet. No, it's not. I just would like to get to the nitty gritty, to the nuts and bolts of this. Do you know what I'm saying? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? What I'm laying down is how many nutrients can you get per calorie equaling health. Lower calorie foods that are high on the nutritional index equal health because you can eat a lot getting all the vitamins and minerals, the fatty acids you need, the brain power you need to sustain you, but yet remaining low in your weight and light in your weight and zippy in your step and your thinking, you know? So I think we have to be careful putting this information out. And um, I just wanted to say that I don't usually respond to what's going on in the vegan movement because I really don't care. I don't listen to like that, uh, I think it's TMZ, which is the drama fest on TV, but but like the, um, the Jerry Springer of the, of the vegan movement. I'm not really into it. Like, I've got things going on in my life. <laughs> and, and maybe you do too, and maybe you like that, but I'm just saying I don't watch it because it does not bring peace and clarity of mind to me, and that's where I want to be. So you'll never hear me talking about that because I really don't know about it. I just happened to catch this today, and I've seen a couple people that were raw vegan, and then they go to eating, okay, well, they just want to eat a little bit of steamed veggies at night. Next thing you know, they're eating this combination 
of cooked food at night. Next thing you know, every time you see them, they're out at a vegan restaurant eating now high oil, high salt, high chemical, and a high fat. For a disaster, basically, to me. I mean, that's a totally different thing than a low-fat raw vegan diet or a low-fat vegan diet high on the nutrient level, you know? There's a big difference in eating white Dixie Crystal sugar stirred into your smoothie and eating one sweet potato mash onto your pound of raw greens drizzling on a raw sauce, bam, for satiation. There's a big difference in that. So anyway, I've yapped enough about that, but I just thought I would, would hit on that because I saw it in I usually don't know what's going on. Oh my gosh, I love this song. But what I do know is some good tunes. And what I do know is living and loving and being me. And even if, if technology collapsed tomorrow, guess what? You can know this. I will still be doing Raw Vegan every dang day. This song, it is my most favorite song ever. <laughs>